thoughts on this on last week. Uh, it is it is definitely encouraging to see how you deliver the word and deliver your lessons with power and joy. And that is definitely a good thing. So thank you for blessing our hearts. And good to see you. It wasn't the last time. We saw you. Good to see you on this morning. So word of God is found uh, in the word, in the book, 23rd number of Psalm. 23rd number of Psalm. If you can, if you're able, stand for the reading of God's word. I ask that you, you listen as I read this familiar song. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Just for a minute, I want to talk about trusting in the shepherd. Trusting in the shepherd. The 23rd Psalms is arguably one of the most famous and beloved passages in the Bible. It is a passage that is uh, memorized by many at a very young age. Both the young and the old know it. Seasoned saints know it. New believers know it. Even unbelievers know it. It is a passage that is read at sick beds, Bible study sessions, recited at weddings, referenced at, on church services, preached at funerals. In fact, in the book, God's Psychiatry by Charles Allen, this, his thesis was that there will be less emotional breakdown if people just read the 23rd Psalms five times a day. But the challenge with knowing and reciting the 23rd Psalms is that if you're not too careful, you can get caught up in just memorizing the words, but not really embracing and realizing the power and the interpretation of this psalm. The 23rd Psalms is indeed a familiar psalm to all of the world. It was a psalm that was penned by David. It is not exactly clear when David penned this psalm. Uh, not sure that if it was penned by David when he fought the lions and the bears in the wilderness or whether or not he penned this psalm after he killed the Philistine giant, or whether or not he penned this psalm when he was running from Absalom, or whether or not he penned this psalm when he was receiving persecution 
from Saul, but it is indeed a fact that David penned this psalm. And there's a reason why he penned this psalm because David himself can identify with saying that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. We can conclude from this study and from this text that in every circumstance that David experienced, the solution and the conclusion is clear that David says that the Lord is my shepherd and I have everything that I need. Uh, from this conclusion, we could also parallel that in every circumstance that we go through, no matter the experience in life, the solution and the conclusion is clear. And it should be the same, that the Lord is my shepherd. And I'm not going to worry about it. However, we can also conclude that this is a song that not everybody can sing. Why do you say that, preacher? Because every person cannot identify or sing this psalm simply because David says that the Lord is my shepherd. David is clear that I shall not want. But he asks the question, is the Lord your shepherd? David is clear that because the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. But he makes the distinction that the, the Lord is not your shepherd. Then you're going to want for everything. But David is distinct and he is clear. As we look at this text that the Lord is his shepherd. And if the Lord is not your shepherd, then the goodness and the mercy may not apply to you. And that's bad news because if, if, if you weren't looking for, for goodness and mercy to follow you all the days of your life, then the Lord has to be your shepherd. John 10 Verse 11, Jesus says that I am the good shepherd. And the good shepherd lays down his, fleet, his life for the sheep. Hebrews chapter 13, verses 20, calls Jesus the great shepherd. Ask yourself, is he your shepherd? 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 4 says, When the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that not, shall not fade away. But the question you should ask yourself, is he your shepherd. If you allow me to take my time to, to break this thing out because you don't want to get caught up in just reading the words and reading it day to day because you already memorize the words. You, you, you memorize them since you were a young baby, but yet or not, you, there's so much richness in this particular passage. David suggests that if you want to live the abundance of life, if you want to experience the joys of life, if, if you want to experience the protection and the comfort from life's circumstances, then he must be your shepherd. There must be a declaration that he is your shepherd. Because, my brothers and sisters, the Lord is indeed a shepherd that you can trust. The Lord is a shepherd that indeed watches over us. He's a shepherd that indeed walks with us, and he's a shepherd that also welcomes us to ones that trust him. My brothers and sisters, there are reasons why you should trust the shepherd. There are reasons why you should trust him and found in the verses 1, 2, and 3. The first reason is that he watches his own. The text says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. But next it says, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. 
green pastures. Like sheep, all of us like to graze, amen? Us sheep, we, we, we like to be able to, to eat, and, and we constantly look for areas to be able to graze. But the text says that, that the shepherd leads us to green pastures. Well, brother, why, why are you so specific about the green pastures? Well, just like anything else, there are pastures around that are not so green, right? Each and every one of us is God's children. We look for places to be able to graze. We, we look for places to be able to, to feed ourselves. And there are areas and, and places in life that, that are not so green, but they are yet attractive. Uh, you've ever heard the, the saying that everything that glitters is not gold? Where every pasture that is available is not green. So, so, but our good shepherd, our shepherd leads us to the green pastures because he knows over here in these other pastures there may be some, maybe some bad fertilizer uh, that was laid that we as sheep may not see it. They, there might be some areas where there's some thorns in the ground where we may not see it. So our good shepherd needs to lead us to the green pastures. Because each and every one of us look for areas to graze, but there may be some areas where there's not so green. And we look for the good shepherd uh, to be able to lead us to those green pastures. But not only does he just lead us, he said, lie down. <laughs> lie down for a little bit. The old folks used to say, uh, come on in and take your shoes off and stay a while. Lay down in the, in the green pastures all, all around us in the front and the back. And, 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 and areas where we could actually have, have opportunity to be able to graze for the good shepherd leads us to the green pastures because us sheep look for areas of things that glitter. And we run to other pastures that may be attractive at one time and given time. But the good shepherd says, no, I'll lead you to the green pastures because he knows what's best for you. He knows what your situation may be, so he makes you to lie down and, and dream pastors. He, he, he leads you, uh, if I can say, to the cross. <laughs> he, he, he leads you to, to the help. He leads you in areas where it is safe. But not only does he uh, make you lie down in the green pastures, and he also leads me to the quiet waters. Well, let's talk about that. Let's talk the, the, the quiet waters. What do you mean, Pastor? Well, because every once in a while, life's rivers are raging, moving fast. And, 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 and just like sheep, we look, we want to go to the areas where the action is happening. Amen. We, 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 we want to get to an area where we want to go where, where, where it's lively and, and, and things are going down and the rushing waters or whatever. But, but our good shepherd, our good shepherd understands that, you know what, you don't need to be in an area where things are rushing. You don't need to be in an area where there's a potential to drown. Well, why do you say that? Because the sheep, if you do the studying of sheep, the sheep uh, have the wool around them. And as they go to the refreshing waters, there's a tendency for the wool to get too heavy when it gets splashed with the water. Yeah. And then when the, when the water splashes the wheel, now the, the sheep, their equilibrium starts to mess up. And then they start to walk a little bit, and all of a sudden they start to fall, and then all of a sudden they drown. So a good shepherd knows the tendency of the sheep. So what the good shepherd does, he goes down to the, to the waters, and he looks ahead. He looks ahead down, downstream, and he goes and he dams up. The water. So now the water is somewhat still. He goes ahead in life and he, he sees those life situations that may cause you to stumble and he dams up the water just so the water can be still. Are there some situations in your life where you thank God that he didn't let that, that, that water come down in your area, but, but he, he went ahead and he dammed the situation. He blocked the situation so you could have still waters maybe he, he blocked a, a job from happening in your life <laughs> maybe maybe he blocked a future relationship 
that was coming down the street and you didn't even see it, but 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 he blocked it. He 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 may have blocked a dangerous situation that was in your life, and he 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 he, he might have, have blocked. Uh, an opportunity for your car to start because you was going across the, the, the city and to, to tell somebody about giving somebody a piece of your mind. Uh, maybe he blocked that signal on your phone from uh, uh, calling that person, giving them a piece of your mind. He blocked that situation because he knew that that wasn't the best thing for you to experience. For our good shepherd understands exactly what he needs, so he leads us by, beside the still waters with the still waters and the refreshment that he provides, we don't know what he has done ahead of time. Because he's our good shepherd. He knows exactly what we need. But the text goes on to say that he restores my soul. What does that mean? Because we, as sheep, we get a little tired every once in a while, amen? We get a little tired every once in a while, but see, the good shepherd understands that not only does he give us physical nourishment beside the still waters and the, and, the, and, and the green pastures, but he gives us spiritual encouragement. For he restores our soul. He restored our physical thing, but now he restores our soul because the good shepherd knows exactly what sheep need. So we get in a situation, we get in situations where we're tired and, and we don't understand what's going on. Our shepherd restores our soul. He encourages us to be able to keep on keeping on. But not only does he restore our soul, he, he, he guides me down the path of righteousness. Uh, this leads me to suggest that not only is there a path of righteousness, but there's some paths of unrighteousness. Right? Because there are, there's some times in your life where, you, where it looks like that's the path I want to go to. Maybe it's the widest path. Maybe it's the easiest path. But my shepherd la- leads me down the path of righteousness. But not only does he lead me down the path of righteousness, he's not leading me down the, pri- the path of righteousness for my name's sake. He, he, he doesn't lead you down, down a path of righteousness just so you can get the credit. He doesn't lead you down a path of righteousness just so you can look good to your friends. And just because he can look good to those who, who see what you're doing. He said he leads you down a path of righteousness for his name's sake. His name is on the line. Your name is not on the line, but his name is on the line. Because God knows exactly what we need. And because he leads us down the path of righteousness, not so you can get the credit, it's because of his name is on the line. The text says for his name's sake. Because he is responsible for his sheep. Don't get so familiar. Don't get so familiar. We're memorizing this text. Understand that he leads you down the path of righteousness. But so he can get the glory. Not so you can get the glory. But not only, but not only does he, does he, does he, does he watch over me. But the text also suggests that he walks with his own. There's a shift. There's a shift. There's a shift. In the text it says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Stay there. Stay there. Even though I walk through the valley, I will fear no evil. In understanding the study of that, the, 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 the word evil also means that I will experience no harm. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, no harm. The valley. The text suggests that this valley is a dark valley. It is a valley that each and every one of us will experience. In fact, I heard that uh, if you haven't experienced a valley, I guarantee you there's a valley with your name on it. There's a valley in which 
you will experience in your life some of the darkest times of your life. There's a time where you will experience some things that I can't even see exactly what's in front of me. I can't see exactly what's on the side of me, but for the text says that even though I walk through the valley, I will fear no evil. But the reality of this text is, if you look at it a little bit more, that even though I'm a child of God, you will experience a valley. The text suggests that each and every one of us, even though we're children of God, we will experience life's tribulations. We will experience some times in our lives where we can't understand what's going on in our life. We can't understand what's going on in front of us. We don't even know what we came out of. But the text says, even though I walked through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Even though I walked through the valley of experience a lost loved one, I will fear no evil. Even though I walked through the valley of the bad relationship, I would fear no evil. Even though I walk through the valley of a new situation in life where I'm unfamiliar with, I will fear no evil. Even though I walk through the valley of experiencing a, a lost job, I will fear no evil. Even though I walk through the valley of a new transition of a career that is unknown, I will fear no evil. Even though I walk through the valley where a child is, is temporarily lost, lost their way, I will fear no evil. Even though I walk through the valley of a report of a doctor, that I didn't really like, I understand, I would feel no evil. Even though I walked through the valley of a, a bad doctor's report, I would feel no evil. Even though I walked through the valley of a period where I'm having sickness of alcohol, I would feel no evil. Even though I walked through the valley of a shadow of death that I will have a drug problem, I would feel no evil. Even though I walked through the valley and I don't know whether or not I'm going to graduate, young people, <laughs> I will feel no evil. Why? But you were with me. <laughs> I thought that was good news. It's because, because you are with me. I will fear no evil. Because now, even though I walk through the valley, but it doesn't even say, it doesn't even say the valley of death. It says shadow of death. I heard a preacher say one time that, 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 that the shadow of a dog can't bite you. The shadow, the shadow of a gun can't shoot you. But nothing will, will, will hurt with a child of God if he's your shepherd. So the shadow of death can't hurt a child of God. Because even though I walk through the valley of the shadow, I will feel no evil. Why? Because thou art with me. But not only are you with me, the text goes on to say, let's break it down, that your rod and my staff, they comfort me. Now why you need a rod and a staff? As sheep, we, 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 we tend to stray. Every once in a while when I was growing up, man, over there on Laughlin, there's a thing called a rod of protection, uh, uh, correction. <laughs> right? That I am familiar with. Every once in a while, the, the sheep may stray at Laughlin. But my father had a rod of correction. <laughs> But not only would they correct me, but they comforted me. Every once in a while, we as sheep, we, 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 we get stray a little bit. But, but not only does he have a rod that, 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 that keeps me going and he protects me, but the rod is in his hand. <laughs> so he has everything we need in the palm of his hand. It's available to us. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Only a child of God, a child of the shepherd, 
can understand the beauty in the valley. Some have suggested that you haven't even lived until you went through a, a valley. You learn a whole lot about yourself coming out of a valley. You learn a whole lot about your friends <laughs> coming out of a valley. You learn how many friends you have, who, who's re who really loves you in the midst of a valley. The only way you'll be able to understand and, and understand the mercies of God <laughs> is coming out of a valley. You've got to be under, uh, to understand that the only way that you can see the fruits of a valley is why? Found in verse 1. If the Lord is your shepherd. Not only does the Lord watch over us. Not only does he walk with us. But the text also suggests that he welcomes his own. Verse 5 says, you prepare a table before me in the very presence of mine enemies. The shepherd shows the utmost hospitality. In this day of time, hospitality is key. You've got to be hospitable. If you are a service provider, you understand that service is key. But not just any service. It has to be top-rated service. Ask any business owner. Mess around to get a one star on a Google rating. Get a couple of one stars on a Google rating, a Google rating review. It won't be too long where you see that business decline. But I thank God that my service provider, that my shepherd, is a six star. Six star. <laughs> it's only five star, but he's a six star. <laughs> and he provides the utmost hospitality. Because the text says that he prepares a table before me. Now what does that say? You break that down. So he, he prepares the meal. He prepares you the feast. After he is walking through the valley, after he's provided nourishment for you, he, 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 my, my same shepherd, he prepares a table before me. Because he is my shepherd, now I, I, I somewhat to, I appreciate that, I expect that. But not only does he prepare a table, but he prepares a table right there in front of the ones that was trying to persecute me. The ones that were trying to do me wrong. The ones that were trying to put a stab up, stab me in the back. The, the same ones that he prepares a table before me. <laughs> in the very presence of mine enemy. But then it goes on to say he anoints my head with oil. What does that mean? Back in the day when, 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 when people uh, uh, welcomed people into their house, they, 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 they washed it. The feet, and and, and 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 now when they got a a a, a, a notable and distinguished guest, that's when they brought out the oil, right? And so 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 when they brought out the oil, then he anointed the guest with oil. The text says that my shepherd not only prepares the table before me, but he anoints my head. I'm the guest with his oil. He allows me to get confidence in what, what, what he's provided for me. Now, and, 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 and another commentator said that he lifted up his head when, when your, head, your head was anointed with oil. That's my shepherd. But not only does he anoint my head, 
Then my cup overflows. The blessing that he's already blessed me with overflows. He continues to provide for me in the very presence of my enemies and my cup overflows when my enemies think that they got the best of me my cup continues to overflow when life seems like it, it got me down my cup <laughs> overflows so now that he's prepared a table before me now that he's anointed my head with oil now my cup running over. Surely. Surely. Goodness and loving kindness will follow me. Hold up. Goodness and loving kindness will follow me. Now, wait a minute. He led me. He's in the front. He makes me lie down with everything on the right, on the side of me. But now he's got should, goodness and love and kindness following me. My shepherd has got me front, back, and side to side. Y'all get that when y'all come to the home. But, but, but my God has got me front, back, and side to side because now he has goodness and mercy following me. Oh, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Hold on. Don't go too fast. All the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now what does this mean? That I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Some writers suggest that David is saying because God, because I'm in your hand and you got me, I can't leave. Where well, I'm going to go. Some writers suggest that David is just doing, being, being greedy. Like, you know what? It, it's too good in here. We're going to stay here all day long. But other writers suggest that because God has, has got you and you're his child and, 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 and he is your shepherd, he's got you protected. You're his sheep. Because even if you try to stray, you can't stray. Because he's got you in the palm of his hand. There's a story of a shepherd who had somewhat of a wayward sheep. And the sheep would stray off every once in a while, but then the shepherd would leave the 99 and went to go get the, the one to come on back. But then he strayed again, and the shepherd went to go get him one more time. But then when he got on that time, he actually took the sheep and he actually broke his leg. And then he put a cast around it. But as he began to heal, he would hold that sheep and caress that sheep to the point where the sheep realized that there was nowhere else to go. But then it was to that point where he realized that the sheep understood where the comfort was he understood where his help was but the story is every once in a while the shepherd may have to break something in our lives may have to hurt something in our lives for us to understand that when we come back when he when he comes back and he puts a cast on us <laughs> we realize that he is indeed the true shepherd and he is the one that we should have been with the whole time but because of the loving kindness and the goodness and the mercy of the shepherd, we would dwell in his house.
forever. Forever. Trusting in the Lord with all your heart. Leaning not to your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. My brothers and sisters, I would, when we look at these particular songs, we can save them with conviction. And understand that it's not just something that we just can recite or should recite. I will bless the Lord at all times. And at all times, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. We can say that with, with conviction. We can say that with understanding. My soul will make her boast in the Lord. And the elmer shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, come magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together for the Lord is good. I say for the Lord is good. I say we can say that with, with, with meaning. And enthusiasm, we can understand that as in Psalm 34, that bless the Lord at all times. And now when we say this 23rd Psalms now, we can say it with understanding that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He guides me in the path of righteousness. For his name's sake. Yeah. 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 Do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I will fear no evil. Why? Because you are with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup runneth over. Surely, 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 goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever, 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 ever. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever, even though I walk through the valley. Have you walked in the valley today? Through the valley of the shadow of death? I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thou art in thy staff. They comfort me. Thou prepared a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Surely, 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 goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. <laughs>